Good evening, everyone. It's uh, six o'clock. Let's not waste any time and let's let's roll on. Are we rolling with Sam this evening? Okay, Sam, we're rolling with you, man. Let's roll. All right. Good evening, Council. This is the work session for the comprehensive plan amendments. Earlier, there, earlier this summer, we did some comprehensive plan amendments for a developer-initiated request, mostly zone change request. Uh, this time around, we're doing mostly uh, city-initiated comprehensive plan requests, uh, as well as agency requests, such as the school district. Um, so there's kind of two parts to this evening. Uh, this first hour of the work session, it's mostly going to just be staff presenting the school district is here they're going to present their portion so that they're going to be up first and then have they brought that incredibly long formula we've got it we've the, got the, it the, the 42 uh, uh if you add a to b and you get w kind of deal that's right i look forward to an explanation of that from them i hope they're ready well i hope they are too uh and then the second part uh, during our regular session is the public hearing. So that'll be the opportunity for any interested citizens or other members of the public to comment on any of these. Uh, but I'll jump right in. Uh, the first comp plan amendment is the Battleground School District Comprehensive Plan Update, as well as an impact fee update. Um, since schools are listed as items to be planned fund planned for under the Growth Management Act. That's kind of how they're brought under our jurisdiction. Um, with us tonight is Michelle Scott and Kevin Jolma. Um, looks like Leanne Brimmer is also available by way of Zoom. Uh, so I'll have Aaron bring up their presentation and then I'll have one or more of them um, come to the podium and kind of present this proposal for you. Okay, who's coming? Come on up. Let's roll. Are you the uh, explainer of the formula? <laughs> I can, I can, uh, I can give you some nice summary of it. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, come on yeah, now. Please, um, bring up Leanne. Unmute her, and I'm sure she would like to say some opening. She's yes. more than welcome. Statement. Thank you, Michelle. There Hello. She is. Hey everyone, I'm Leanne Bremer. I represent the Battleground School District, help them put together their updated capital facilities plan and impact fee calculation. And Michelle will be going through some slides with you, but I just want to say a few introductory remarks, maybe explain the formula a little bit. But um, as Sam explained, the, the uh, Growth Management Act requires the city to adopt the uh, the school district's capital facilities plan and impact fee calculation so that uh, because it's the, the city that collects the fee at the building permit stage and uh, that's how the, the law is set up. So it becomes part of the city's comprehensive plan. Uh, we, we went before the planning commission and they recommended approval of the plan and the school impact fee. And they had some really good questions. We had we had good discussion at the, the planning commission level. We've also been to Clark County, Vancouver, and Vancouver, and Yakult as well, because the district straddles those boundaries. So the capital facilities plan is uh, is required in order for the district to collect impact fees. To and it has to show that they are growing, and I don't think there's any question they are, and that they they have a need for facilities to serve the new growth. And so um, what the plan details is uh, inventory of existing facilities, enrollment projections, and capital facilities needs. And then getting to the formula itself, it is um, pretty complicated. I think you need a calculus degree to understand it, but this formula has been on the books almost 30 years and has been used in every jurisdiction in Clark County. And there are a number of variables that get plugged into that formula. And that's why you see um, 
a, a real difference in the amount of fees being collected across Southwest Washington, because they're, they're probably, I haven't counted, but I would guess eight or nine variables that get plugged in depending on each school district's needs. And the primary driver of the fee is the cost of new facilities to serve growth. So the higher that that top line is, the higher the bottom line is. And uh, you'll see it in neighboring uh, Ridgefield School District, they they also have a higher fee than say Vancouver, just because their needs are so great. And Battleground is um, closer to, to Ridgefield than Vancouver in terms of their fee amount. So with that, uh, I will turn it over to Michelle and she can go through her slides and, and explain how the school board came to its recommendation. Uh, Ms. Bremer, before you go back to Zoom land, uh, mm -hmm. what, what, what is, is, are you an employee of the district or how, how do we know you? Oh, okay. I'm, I'm an attorney uh, hired by each of the Clark County school districts. There are nine of them in Southwest Washington to help on this particular project. So I'm, I'm a private <laughs> practice attorney doing this work for the district. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next slide. <laughs> All right. So we'll start with uh, a, assessing and dispersing school impact fees. So as Leanne um, mentioned, we are with um, Clark County, City of Battleground, Town of Yalcult, and City of Vancouver. Um, fees are remitted to dis districts from the, the agencies, um, from the municipalities, uh, pursuant to an interlocal agreement or an ordinance, and districts control the expenditures as identified in the capital facility plan. Next slide, please. So how districts spend school impact fees, um, construction improvements that add student capacity and related support facilities necessary to serve growth. So um, as our enrollment grows and um, our needs um, uh, grow, um, so, our, so do our facilities. Um, we also have system-wide construction improvements that benefit the additional students from new development. So that could um, be a support facility such as a warehouse or a district office that would, um, because all of those go into the support of the, of, of the growth from the new students. So districts, uh, next slide please. So districts process and adopt a capital facility plan and school impact fees. So we prepared student enrollment projections. And I can tell you right now, our projections, our forecast, we are, we've blown the, that forecast away. So we uh, budgeted conservatively. This, um, this plan was put together very conservatively. We just didn't know with the pandemic, we had a, we had a, a, a very large decline in enrollment. We were at, um, we had projected um, conservatively that all of the students that were attending in the 21-22 school year would return in the 22-23 school year. And they did, and so did about 200 homeschool students and private um, school students and, um, and then new growth as well. So we had a, a huge uh, increase from our enrollment projection. Um, and uh, what, what is that number? 12,200. 12,200 12, at today? Yes. What was uh, it? Sorry, pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic, uh, we had about an 8% decrease. So um, I don't know. Yeah, 12, very, very, yeah. Roughly 11 grand. So, yeah, 11,000. So, yeah. So um, so the district um, uh, prepared it with the student enrollment. We identified our facility needs and then we obtained student generation rates. And that's another important part of the calculation um, in the formula is how many on average, if you take all the students that are enrolled right now and you take all of the houses that are here right now in, in our district, what is the percentage of that house that would carry a student? And so we find out in our primary level what that student generation rate is, and we find out middle school and high school. And from that, we can determine what we would expect when a new home is built 
what that home would bring on average. And so that is part of the formula calculation and each district can be different in that in that student generation rate, depending on the number of students children that are attending schools that are in those homes. So um, you may have a district that has, a, you know, quite a less enrollment, that, you know, and as a lower generation rate, and then a higher generation rate. I don't think ours is necessarily high at all, um, but it's not necessarily low either here. So it's, I would say it's about medium. So uh, the calculated, um, so then We've also included in our um, a capital facility plan our calculated school impact fee, and we'll be going through that um, later on. So um, the school board did adopt the capital facility plan and set the impact fee. I will let you know right away that the calculated amount is not our proposed. We have asked for a reduced rate from the calculated amount that the district did come up with in the formula. May I stop you again then? Uh if you need to build the schools and you have the dollar amount set that you think you need to build the school, then why would you reduce the dollar? I will go right through that in just a few slides. I have that okay, for you, but it's it's based on construction costs and what we calculated from 2015 when we were last here to 2022. We did it based on construction costs from OSPI, um, this uh, Office of the State Superintendent of Public Instruction. Okay, nope. So we've had some changes and I think those are important to mention. And, and just to give you also, we were, we normally do our six year plans. We come to you every four years. So we should have been here in 2019 talking about school impact fees. And, but at that time it was the pandemic enrollment was declining. We didn't know what was going on, right? And, and capital facility plans were put on hold. So there has been a delay in the request for an increase in capital facility plans. So that's going to affect also the change in the, uh, in the request as far as um, the need. So, um, so changes from 2015 to 21. Um, so in 17, 2017 to 18, the implementation of full day kindergarten from half day, RCW. Um, so we took AM and PM kindergarten and made it all day for those kiddos. So that created, um, uh, that took those facilities where we were running two classes in one classroom, we needed an additional classroom. So that made changes to our facility needs. Um, also in 1920, we had the implementation of initiative 1351, which lowered the class sizes from in grades K-3 from a ratio of 21 to 17 to 1. So that also impacted the number of students that would be in that classroom, again, creating additional needs for classroom to serve students. And then this year, we phased, we're phasing in our transitional kindergarten um, for students not age five by August 31st, who sc score below average for kindergarten preparedness. So we opened four classrooms this year. It's an exciting program. It serves those students that need some extra support to get them ready for kindergarten. That is a state funded program. It's fully funded by the state um, to um, for a full day enrollment. It's they're, they're counted just like their kindergartners. So we'd like to open more. We just don't know if we have the facilities to do that because of, um, of space issues. So next slide, please. So I already talked about forest casting enrollment and the conservative um, uh, projection. And however, we do know that there are many developments in the city of battleground under um, um, in active stages of development. So, and we know that that will grow our enrollment. Um, we've actually um, hired a demographer to help us with that, to really help us do some real long range projections on that. Um, so um, we're very excited to have um, some updated um, uh, professional services to help us with those. Um, we did look at 
uh, trends and patterns uh, pre-pandemic. Um, um, but uh, again, so we're 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 hoping that taking into consideration all of the current active developments and those coming down the road will help us to determine enrollment projections. Next slide, please. So, oh, this one. Okay, yeah. Nope. Go back to uh, forecasted enrollment. So you can see from our forecasted enrollment, our uh, middle column here, we had 11,709. We're at 12,200 now for that. Um, so we did, we had a, a, a great increase in student um, returning um, to um, our schools. Facility needs. So it's pr our primary and middle schools are our two um, uh, grade bands that really need, uh, that have unhoused students. Um, and unhoused means they're not in brick and mortar. It doesn't mean that they're not in a facility. They're just in a portable. And so, um, that is, um, so there's a need um, under the forecasted enrollment for, um, for the primary and the middle schools. Next slide, please. And uh, just to let you know, for like Ridgefield, their impact fee request is even higher than ours um, quite a bit because they have a need for high school. So when you look at the formula calculation, there's a column for primary middle and high school and we don't have a projection in our high school so that's not part of our formula and calculation because we're currently under our enrollments and and our spaces we do not uh currently show need in our high schools so um in the so we already talked about the facility needs for capacity for unhoused students and the plan is um our Capital facility plan reflects um, the need to construct permanent capacity of two primary schools housing 450 students each, two middle schools housing 450 students, support facilities uh, with an expended warehouse and maintenance, and to purchase portables. And um, without a bond, that's not going to happen, right, for the new construction, um, but we will be able to purchase portables and we could use that uh, money to um, work on getting those facility those um, sites ready to go um, as um, when bonds are you know when the board does come um, does put a, a bond on the ballot and um, our board is has met recently and is discussing a bond measure um, for facilities. Before we move on, one more, if I may, what what size acreage does a primary school require? We do our schools on a primary and a, a secondary on the same site, so we require twenty acres. For those twenty, two. a minimum of twenty acres. Yes. yes, and that will house four hundred and fifty students times two. Okay. <laughs> Okay, next slide. So financing plan to add capital facilities. So we do have a, a financing plan um, in our facility plan. We have secured financing, which are impact fees that have been currently collected um, that we project um, are available for use. Um, we do, um, we are in the currently um, putting uh, the CAM alternative learning uh, school um, in uh, three tenplexes. Um, and um, that is, so that is using up some of that, that those capital facility, those um, school impact fees that we've collected already. So that's, um, uh, we lost our lease on that facility uh, that they were uh, in the uh, church facility and, or uh, private, private, facility that they were in. So we lost our lease on that. So the impact fees were um, uh, important to be able to uh, house those students. So um, unsecured financing again is impact fees to be collected over the next six years, bond funding and state funding assistance if available um, uh, based on um, the state funding formula um, for um, schools. Next slide, please. 
<clears throat> so our current bond, we we're talking about bond, our current bond um, expires December of 23. So, and we will have uh, zero bond um, payments um, uh, pending um, any uh, bond authorization that may get approved. So um, ongoing uh, district discussion for future bonding, our, we already talked about that. So um, state funding assistance is uh, funding approved by the state legislature. So we're dependent on that. So let's go to this impact fee amount. So there is a formula and that is um, part of the, um, uh, the capital facility plan. Our calculated amount for single family is $11,535 and multifamily $4,963. And um, as I said before, and I've also put some previous adopted fee amounts here. So you can see in 2009, our uh, previous amount was $9,880. 2011, five thousand one twenty eight uh, and these are for the single family is all I'm referring to and then six thousand three hundred ninety seven is our current fee and so it, the formula as Leanne mentioned really follows construction costs is really is one of the main uh, drivers of that formula so next slide please um so the district is um uh, decided to do some research on construction costs based on some information from OSPI. And so we looked at the um, average uh, cost per square foot in 2015, and then looked at it for 2025 and um, 550. I don't know if that's, we're there now or that's now so but at the time you have to remember that this was being put together it was a little while ago and costs have still increased because of inflation so that was a 68.2 percent increase we applied that to the current amount which gave us the ten thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars and then the multifamily at three thousand eight hundred and forty five and um, our board felt comfortable with this amount it um, reduced amount supports um helps support Support affordable family housing and provides classroom to house the students that are coming from those houses. Next slide, please. Oh, there we are. End. Have we any questions? Yes, ma'am. So I just have a couple questions. So this rate is for every municipality in the district? Yes. And then what happens if other municipalities don't approve it for the in increase. Uh, is Leanne still on? <laughs> I am. So the answer is each, uh, the county and each city or town could, can decide on a different fee as long as they don't go over the maximum amount. And, and as far as I know, that hasn't happened except in Ridgefield. I think one time the county and city there had different fees, but Typically, the the it's it's uniform across the jurisdictions that the districts are in. Yeah, currently, yeah, called um, in 2015 approved a five thousand flat fee is what they approved in um, for the 2015. So that's what they're collecting in the town of Yakult. And they're also supposed to be going up to the 11 or the 10,000. Oh, yes, we have presented to them our request. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, we I just presented it to them. I was just thinking if the others don't contribute, if you're still able to make your goals, <laughs> probably not. Well, I, I will tell you the delay in, in collecting of impact fees has set us back a little bit, you know, but we enable to manage to put portables down and house students. So that's the good news is that we have been able to, but we do have, we would like to increase our um, transitional kindergarten. We'd like to be able to appropriately house all the students coming from new development and growth. Um, and this just, and the city of battleground has a lot of it. So. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a question. Yes, ma'am, please. So um, I may have missed it, but do you have any plans to go out for um, for a bond in 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 the near future? 
Yes. Uh, yeah. So the board has been discussing it. Um, we are, it's, uh, there's a lot of variable, there's a lot of things to consider, right? With running a bond, uh, the current economics of the, of the, of the state and, um, you know what, I'm going to let Kevin talk to about it a little bit too. Go ahead. Yeah. The, the, you know, the board has just, we've been discussing it and I've been putting together plans of what, what those would cost. Um, uh, right now, uh, we're in very early phases of discussing that. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, at least a year from now. At least a year. Okay. Um, and then does McCleary have any part in funding facilities? It, no. It's all just the education part of it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Th these would all be part of our capital um, uh, projects fund and those are restricted okay. for use on facilities only. Right. Okay. All right, that's all I have. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. So this is, and forgive me for not maybe doing a little homework before I probably could have asked my council member to the left and found this out, but I'll ask you. Um, so if we, the deputy mayor brought up a good point. If we except what you guys have put out here. And the county comes back and says, eh, we really don't, we don't want to be there. We're going to be here. Yakul comes back, says we want to be here. Um, Cause we've already seen that happen with fire impact fees. The county collects no fire impact fees for fire district three. We collect fire impact fees in the, in the city. So if you're building in the city of battleground, you're paying fire impact fees. If you build, in the county down by Prairie High School and build apartment complexes all you want down there, you collect no fire impact fees. So it doesn't help the fire district out. So we're subsidizing what's going on in fire district three by our fire impact fees. So <clears throat> what happens then if the county comes back and says, we don't like 10,003, whatever it is, seven, 10,700, we want to be at 8,000 and Yakult comes back and says, Oh, we want to be at 5,000. And Battleground says, We're fine with word, you know, whatever you guys want, we'll go get it. What happens then? Those will be the rates that we'll, we'll, we'll receive. Uh, it's up to voted uh, elected officials to, to make those determinations. And we have four municipalities, and Yakult has historically dropped them. The county has, I don't believe they've ever dropped them. So it will be what we receive. Okay. Because that's that's my only concern is like, not that it's competition, but it's competition. You know, if it's if it's way more expensive to develop here, well, we'll just go past 179th and develop. And we've already seen what that's done. The county's really good at doing that. They're they're good at developing to their standards, which are not our standards. And so you know, Yakult, we've seen a big boom. Well, I guess you could call it big, probably for Yakult, mm -hmm. you know, a bigger boom. And and I know there's some developments getting ready to go in up there. Um, you know, and I asked Mr. McCoy just a minute ago when you when you were talking about this, when, as a district wide, you look at it and you give a percentage. Well, you know, every home has 1.2 children. Is it different in Yakult? Is it different in Battleground? Than, than it would be, you know, so I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem supporting this, but if, if Battleground has 3.5 kids per home and Yakult has four and the county has one, well, that's different, right? We're, we're, we're putting more kids in the school than they are. And so our impact is greater. Um, but I, I know that would take way more than your math equation to figure that out right mm -hmm. of what comes from the city what comes from the county um and separate it that way but you know just from 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 our, my standpoint is i would love to see i hope the county would do this and i'd love to see where the others are but and i don't think we've ever not it's your deal right <laughs> we just say yes and it's your deal so um but it, it is a little concerning that that they would come in lower than where you guys need to be and put it on the backs of others that um, to help support this. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
Yes, ma'am. Sorry, his uh, questions kind of got me wondering something. So it's for the capital plan. So that means our money that we pay, if we ended up paying more, is it could benefit Yackle, right? It's not anything specific to projects in our area. It's just Correct. the whole district. So, and we are collecting where the growth is, right? So you would uh, you would coordinate that schools that are growing where the facility where the impact fees are coming are going to demand the greater amount of of students in that area. So to house, okay, that makes sense. Thank you. If we were to take Mr. Bowman's question to the to the end, we would say to ourselves, "We'll be the last people in." And so we would wait and see what our friends in Yakult do. We would wait to see what our friends at the county do and, and Vancouver in this case. And so we would just be the last in. It, it is a bit irritating to me that uh, the folks, uh, let's say this, I get a tremendous amount of emails about the growth in Battleground. Always in those emails are two things. First one is, we don't have enough water to drink. I always send back to them, we're good to 2035, drink on. And then the other thing is there aren't enough schools for the children. That's, that's always in there. And I always reply back to them that the folks at the, at the school board have figured out a dollar amount to replace the schools. To find out that across the district, we're not paying the same, I didn't realize that. That's a little irritating to me that the, the folks in the North County who over the years I've been here have complained that they've been forgotten. Well, hell, you hadn't paid. You don't, you're, you're down $2,000 for every house built in Battleground so far. And at this point at 10-7, if they decide to hang in at five, then you're down half. So I, uh, I believe, Ms. Erdman, as far as I can see, I think we should be the last in. And we should see what uh, what our fellow friends in the North County uh, decide they want to play. Uh, because I'm all for giving you the 10-7. We need the, we need the space. I get it. But I'm not interested in in being the the lead dog of this uh, this parade if the other districts aren't going to participate at the same rate. That just doesn't seem fair to me. And as I explained to these emailers that, that you know, these people are paying. If you're paying 10760 to it for your new house as your impact fee, you're, you're paying your share. You're paying what's being asked by the school board. And, and that is fair. But I, I'm not too certain. When will you hear from Yackel? Um, I'll have Leanne answer that and maybe speak to some of what you've um, talked about. I do want to let you know that um, uh, the collection of impact fees do offset a bond request because we're going to use those impact fees to help cite those schools and to help participate in the those capital facilities. So what that will do is that folks that currently don't have kids in school, that reduces that bond rate. Maybe not very much, but it will impact the bond rate. So um, why we appreciate you taking your time to, to consider our request, um, just remember that we are charging these only to new houses being built for growth and those house and that will help offset some of our bond needs. Sam, um, how many how many houses how many houses are online for the coming year? How, how many would you would, do you expect? Like to be built or to to be finished and and be put up for sale? <laughs> Roughly, we had nine hundred over the next couple of years, wasn't it? Yeah, hmm. that stuff is being broke out. Oh. Preliminary approved, or yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. How many would you say? About eight hundred. I think the last time I looked at it, which was probably a month less than a month ago, it was around that eight twenty eight fifty. 
would, would someone do the math on what 800 times 10,760 is for me, please? 8.6 million. And would you do the same? Well, if we go half at, at Yakult, we're going to assume they're not going to build the same number by any stretch. But you still, as a percentage, they're half down on us. And those as, are just preliminary approvals. I understand that. So, well, let's take six million just for just for giggles. So, if we're going to draw six million dollars out of this community, while at the same time as a percentage, we're not drawing that out of any other community. <clears throat> no can do. No so, can do. May I ad address these points, uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, uh, yes ma'am. Please, please. You, 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 you have the formula. We're told. So uh, let, let's hear. <laughs> I do. So a couple of points I want to make um, in terms of timing. Yakult, um, they, the town council just needs to meet again and approve the, the capital facilities plan and impact fee. They've, they've already had their hearing. We've been hung up a little bit because we're negotiating a new interlocal agreement. So it's on me to check in with the town attorney and see where that is. But we we were definitely hoping by the end of the year to have that approved. Clark County, um, through it's a little bit of frustration, uh, they will not be able to adopt the new plan and impact fee till next year. They're telling me July. And this is because their last year's comp plan amendments, uh, the, let's see, what, so 2021 comp plan amendments did not get approved till July, 2022. So they cannot adopt new comp plan amendments this calendar year. And it's their uh, attorney's opinion that they have to wait a whole year before they can update their comp plan again. This is part of a comp, plan amendment, the capital facilities plan. So we won't have our plan adopted till July of next year by Clark County. And then the other point I wanna make is all, because jurisdictions only can open up their comp plan once a year, all of your comp plan amendments are bundled together and you can't adopt, you have to adopt them all in one ordinance. And I think Sam can address that. So delaying the school districts would delay everybody else. Well, first, let, let me say that, I, that I'm not surprised about the gang that can't shoot straight. <laughs> yes. uh, the, I'm not going to go there. But if we wait until July for them, then just doing basic math for someone from North Carolina says that we're already 400 houses into this in the coming year. Uh, that, that's, and that's, so we're, we're, where's the equity in this? Where's the fairness in this? Why, why is it that if I moved here from, let me just say it because everyone thinks we all moved here from California. If, if I moved here from California and bought one of these new houses on Northwest 25th Avenue for $700,000 and I paid $10,760, and then someone moves just in outside the city limits and buys one of these houses for, let's just say $700,000, and they paid $5,000. Can you tell me where that $5,800 went? Is it, is it in the builder's pocket? Is it in the buyer's pocket, the realtor's pocket? Whose pocket will that be going into? Do you, do you happen to know? I, I don't, I mean, it's it. I'm told uh, that a lot of the fees just get built into the purchase price, so the buyers are are paying that fee. Well, of course, of course, they're footing the bill, and and that leaves the folks who live inside the city of Battleground because seven people made a decision that we do want to support schools. We have always wanted to support schools, but those that live outside the city of Battleground want to drag their feet either down in Vancouver because of incompetence or because up in Yakult, they want to fight the man. Well, yeah. I, I uh, this, this is irritating, but Ms. Herman, let me ask you, then, then we, we just hold off and we do this at the end of next year on our comp plan update. And we just wait and see in July and see what the gang that can't shoot straight does. And we can see what our folks in Yakult do. 
and and we just roll with it. I, I know that is ripping you off, but am I going to rip you off or am I going to rip my neighbors off? And so, yes, just a moment. It, it, it is irritating to me because I was all ready just to say, perfect, you've done the math, you know what you need, we'll roll with it. But to find out that my neighbors outside the city are not willing to roll with you, I'm not sure I'm willing to roll with you. And so, ugh, God, why can't things be easier? Yes, ma'am, please. You want to go yeah, I have oh, yes, ma'am, please. That's okay. Uh, so, Aaron, you might be able to tell me this. Um, I see you. If we were to um, wait on the other jurisdictions, how does that affect our plan? Uh, that is if we do hold off and wait on this the microphone's not working again um we'll be in the same boat you know every jurisdiction has a little bit different timeline for when they request all their comp plan amendments and when they do that update so these are never going to fall in line exactly correctly because every jurisdiction has a little bit different timeline built into their code for their annual comp plan so if we push this off, then that means if we push out our whole comp plan amendment to keep this school impact fee in there, we won't be able to do another amendment until the following year. That's not what I'm stating. I'm stating we do our comp plan, they're out. They're out until, until November of next year. It's a long time. That is a long time. Yes, ma'am. So I was just wondering, what is the rate that Clark County pays? Uh, the same rate currently that that you're paying right now, okay. yeah, and city of Vancouver as well. It, it Town of Yakult's the only one that's different. It, it's a little galling, as you can tell to me, that, uh, by by my, I, I'm normally not this guy. I'm I'm all in for the school, but then it it galls me that it, it would be like finding out that my neighbor next door. Uh, has been getting his water ten dollars cheaper, even though we use the same amount of water every month. That would just irritate the crap out of me. And to find out that the folks who complain the most about not having the better schools in the North County are not paying their share—that's galling. And so uh, I, I don't know what 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 does the city hope to, to for us to do this evening. Well, and I think you can correct me if I'm wrong, but has anyone made a final decision on this for this coming year? We we just happen to be the first, so we don't know yet if. Yeah, so we've we met with most of the planning commissions, right? So and so and now we're in these phases where we're going to uh, council, um, and Leanne can uh, jump in here. Um, City of Vancouver. Um, had a work session and we will be going there in December. We have a couple meetings in, in city of Vancouver. Um, we currently don't have any residential houses being built in the small overlay that we have there. So it's not really impactful to us at all because there is, you know, unless something comes up with some development over there. Um, so, um, the, like I said, we we got we got through the planning commission, and it was quite a surprise to us that we would not be going back. Um, we would not be included in a, a, a current update that was going to be soon, sooner yes, than later. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say, if Clark County is paying the same rate as us, but it would only be the town of Yackel that wasn't paying their and they're it's pretty small. Ms. Erdman, my suggestion is we move this to the 19th of December. On the 19th of December, at that point, you should have heard from whomever you need to hear from, and we'll make a decision at that point. Yep. I, uh, we are I, just up for public hearing tonight. This will be coming back already on the 5th, and we can we can push. I, I think we need to do our best to try to get all of this adopted before the end of the year so we stay on our same schedule, but that would be my suggestion. Yeah. And I am so, yeah, we're not it's not up for decision this evening. It's I understand we're, we're 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 yeah. So the public hearing is going to be later in the meeting. Yes. 
and we'll we'll hear at that point. Okay. I uh, does anyone time. else have any questions for these folks? Uh, can I, Liam? Do we have any? Um, do we have any plans to be at this at the council meetings for um, Clark County? On this on this topic, there is no no there isn't anything scheduled. The um, we we can maybe make a request for a workshop and see if we can um, get a, take a temperature from the council, even though they can't make a or won't make a decision this year. Uh, perhaps we can get some sense of where they're heading. Okie doke. Uh, thank you. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you. We wish you the best. Sam, let's roll on. It's uh, 1845, we've got 10 minutes. Okay. Next item is uh, the parks plan reference. Uh, this is almost just procedural, not much to present here. Anywhere in our comprehensive plan where it references our 2015 parks plan, we're gonna strike that and replace it with our uh, 2022 parks plan, which um, hopefully will be adopted December 5th. The next item is our rezoning and density increases. Um, I'll leave it up to you, but I might suggest just giving ourselves a 10 minute break and I'll do the full presentation because there may be interested citizens and other members that want to chime in during the public hearing if, if that works for you. We, we can skip past that. Is there any, is there one behind it or is that the, is that the end of the ball game? Did you have anything, Mark, that you wanted to? Okay. Why don't we go to Mark? Can, can we square that up in 10 minutes? Let's roll. Uh, so for the transportation plan, we have two updates. Uh, we got the grant for the project at Northwest 20th Avenue and Northwest 9th Street. So that was added to the plan. That's the compact roundabout. And then with the TBD, there's a requirement that the project be in the transportation plan. So I added an a item there, it's number 200, that just covers all of the local streets in the city. That way the TBD dollars can be spent on those. Um, and then I made the mapping change to add the um, the 9th and 20th project on there. So those were the three changes to the transportation plan. What's a compact roundabout? It's a small roundabout. I understand that. I know I know what compact means, Mark. I, I, I know. It means I know I'm a hillbilly. Give it, give it to us in, in just easy terms. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm a hillbilly, but I have heard that word before. It just means that it can fit within the existing right of way. So when you have a regular roundabout, like they actually end up being pretty large and you usually have to rebuild everything. A so, compact one functions the same. It just fits with the so, existing So it's right just away. instead of a, a it is a tree in the middle instead of a. You can do that. You can have concrete. Easy. You can. I've seen a sign. You know, it's it's flexible. And when do you hope to start on that? So the funding will be available next year, all of next year scheduled for design. So construction will be 2024. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I just had a quick question about the compact design. Uh, <laughs> um, are semi trucks and larger vehicles still going to be able to maneuver it? Yeah, I'm not sure that that's a truck route. So what we'll design for school buses. Okay. Um, that's typically the largest you should see there. So um, what you'll typically see is right in the middle, you'll have either the tree or the kind of area that's built up. There'll be sort of a middle area that um, vehicles won't drive onto, but it will allow the buses or the trucks to drive over to deal with those. And then you'll have the asphalt area, which your normal cars will use. So, so it'll have a flowing type yeah, you'll have flat, a little bit of a hump, and then the big circle. How much do those cost to build? The estimate for that one is a half million with design and the construction. And then there's some pedestrian enhancements. So there's going to be the rapid rectangular flashing beacon. So that's included in there. All right, where else do you want one? Like right by my house? Yeah, Walmart. Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. Oh. That, that wouldn't have to be compact, though. No, that would be bigger. That's That'd a bigger intersection. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yep. Pleasure as always. Sam, uh, we'll uh, move on at the regular meeting for the for the uh, previous mention. And is there anything else? I still got the water, which I think I can oh, pretty fast. Oh, yeah, as well. let's. 
it's uh, so we adopted the water last year as part of that. It gets sent to Department of Health for their review. Um, they had some pretty minor changes, so I'm just going to go over the couple biggest ones. Um, on the wellhead protection plans, there's a bunch of charts in there that essentially deal with industries that could harm our aquifers. Um, they like those lists updated every couple of years, so we updated all of those. The main part of the plan stayed the same. It's just really adding any new businesses that are in town, uh, the letters that go with it, that sort of thing. Uh, they requested an affordability analysis, so Megan did that for me, and it shows that our water is affordable. Um, and then the last thing was for our water quality monitoring plan was essentially if we ever get E. coli in the system, how we inform people. And so they wanted more detail about how that would work, who we would talk to, sort of a, literally a step-by-step -step of that whole process. And so we updated that, and all of those documents are in the packet. They, they've never heard of social media? <laughs> uh, do, do they think we have Paul Revere? I mean, I, do, do we have some dude on a horse running through? There's there's E. coli in the water. There's E. coli in the water. Yeah, I think what their their theory is, is that if you have a checklist, you don't have to think about it when you're all panicked okay. because it's so they like to see us step by step. Well, okie doke. Okay, Sam, we're back at you, brother. Are we are we done for now? No, I'm good. I appreciate everyone. It uh, the time is uh, ten minutes of seven. We'll see you back at seven.
Good evening, everyone. It's seven o'clock. If you're uh, eligible, uh, able, excuse me, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Thank you very much, Ms. Cody. Let's see who's here. Mayor Johnson. I'm here. Deputy Mayor DeRogis. Here. Council Member Bowman. Here. Council Member Cortez. I see him. Present. I hear him. Council Member Davis. Here. Council Member McCoy. Here. Council Member Walters. Here. The rule has been called, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, are there any additions or removals from the agenda? Thank you, sir. Second. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. Council Member reports. Mm. Yes, ma'am. I attended the um, Mosquito Control District meeting, and uh, it was our first in-person meeting in over two years, and um, got to have a tour of the facility. Um, we approved the budget and voted for um, board um, president, secretary, treasurer, vice president, um, and I am now the Secretary Treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so one of the things that came out of that meeting was that um, it was, we had a really, really bad mosquito year, um, especially in Ridgefield and Camas areas. And um, it was discovered, apparently the, the district did not realize that the wildlife refuge, which we are not allowed to treat, um, floods the refuge every year for a duck hunt. Um, and that may have contributed to the, the situation that we saw la uh, this last summer with the heat um, as, as long as we had it. Um, they are um, currently being allowed now by the refuge to go in and do some, some data collection and, and some testing. So we should know um, hopefully soon, whether or not they'll allow us to go in there um, with some treatment products for next year. Is that both refuges, uh, Washougal and Ridgefield? As far as right now goes, it's just the Ridgefield one. So. And what is the budget? What, what are we spending to control? I, I have to get back to you on that, <laughs> that number. It's, um, it's over, over a million, so yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Anyone else? I mean, just basically, I attended the ECHO meeting, uh, which is a mid, uh, ending community homelessness organization where we discuss homelessness in the community and what different agencies and partners are doing. And again, we talked about the need for uh, space within the county to have another safe park. That's where uh, people get screened and approved to park their vehicle in a safe space. Um, typically, it is seniors or single women that go to those sites. So we're still trying to figure out if there's anywhere, in, if the county has any space that they're able to use. So if anybody hears of anything or knows of any spaces that would be available for that, it'd be really helpful to help for the community. Um, and then just basic updates, uh, nothing Nothing major, just looking for a site. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move on. Ms. Urban, anything from the city? Oh. No, ma'am. Uh, citizens Communications, uh, I have one. Noel, are, are you willing to come now or do you wish to come somewhere down the line? Okie doke. Welcome aboard. Kind of hitting a lot of different topics, but we'll um, let hopefully it it's the right place in the agenda. Let it let it roll. Noelle Lovern, I'm with the Building Industry Association of Clark County. Um, I'm here tonight uh, not only to talk about it, the impact fees that are being proposed, but also really how it relates to housing affordability. Um, we are about families and children as well. Um, we know that we have to have solid infrastructure, good schools, all those things to be a thriving community, but we also have to have homes for them to go home to. And 
um, afford, uh, affordable housing has become a huge issue. So just some quick um, notes for the council. Um, so I did some quick math and I'm not an economist. So I do letters, not numbers. Um, but it looks like if all of the um, impact fees passed that are being proposed, it would be about $6,000 that would be added to the, the cost of a new home. What that, re what that translates to is, and I don't have those numbers specifically for battleground, but at the state level, for every thousand dollars that's added to the price of a new home, it prices out over 2,100 Washington households. So we we could drill that down to battleground if we had more time. But um, I guess what I'm saying is um, when we're looking at 84% of Clark County residents cannot afford to buy a house at the median sale price and um, as in uh, an article I read today, um, the rental market is just as difficult. We only have 43% of, of, we only are able to house 43% of the low income fam families that need housing right now. Um, so I would just ask that we really consider each of these impact fees and what it's really doing to the housing affordability. Thank you. I read the same article, and if yeah, I believe if I read it properly, that uh, Battleground was the most affordable on both ends. All right, both, both on uh, purchase and on rental. Yes. So uh, I don't know what that says about our friends in Camas and Washougal and Vancouver and Ridgefield and Le Center. We'll let them worry about that. But uh, as of today, uh, according to this guy, whoever this guy was sure. in the paper, uh, Battleground seems to be the place that. You can at least maybe attain some housing at a reasonable price. Well, I can say I'm in the market right now and it's difficult. So. I, can, I can imagine. <laughs> All right. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close uh, citizens' communications and move on to the consent agenda. Does any council member believe that any item needs to be withdrawn? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. Ms. Erdman, we're moving on now, I guess, to the meat of the matter, and that's the uh, annual code amendment, and we'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor Johnson. Yes, we have for public hearings for the annual code amendment, so I'm going to turn it over to our community development director, Sam Kremit. Um, we did present these at the last meeting, so I think Mr. Kremit will just go through the changes that we discussed at the last meeting, and then we can move on to the public hearing. Is it not working? There you are. <laughs> I just got to get closer. You got to get closer. <laughs> well, I was hoping to go through all these changes, but we were looking sure. forward to that as well. Didn't let me. So we'll just. <laughs> uh, really, the only change, uh, unless someone left something, was in the uh, ethics portion. And that is highlighted in yellow. If there are any questions, we're here to address those. And I think that's somewhere around 149 in the packet, the PDF version. The the change that we made two weeks ago, uh, sorry. is that is that what you're stating? Yes, um, 154 through 157 or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Does anyone have any questions of that? Yes. Yes. Uh, nothing else, Sam? The only thing I was going to mention, uh, there's been some extensive legal review being done on this. So <clears throat> there may be some pieces that we have to take out and adopt next year, particularly, I think the parks plan, we, we need to work through a little bit more, but we'll keep you posted. Otherwise, we have this scheduled for December 5th for adoption. And the parks plan is will will still be in it. Um, we'll see. We need to find time with our attorney to work through the details. Hmm. Uh, the parks plan is going to be proposed for adoption. It's just the code language 
that may, we may need some more time on that. And it won't be delayed too long. Uh, Mahey Jackson is working on it, but they've had quite a few things pop up. So we want to make sure that if we're making big policy changes that they've vetted that. So we may bring that back mid to late January, probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, we're going to open the public hearing. Uh, on uh, on the annual code amendments, is there anyone interested in speaking to these? Don't see anyone rushing for the microphone, so we'll close the public hearing and move on. All right. Um, next up for public hearing is the annual comprehensive plan amendments. So we started that in the study session. So I will turn it over to Mr. Kremen again to kind of go through the remainder of the items that are associated with the comp plan amendment, and then we can go to the public hearing. Thank you. Okay, we'll go through these in order again. The first item is the comprehensive plan amendment for the Battleground School District uh, uh, capital facility impact fees. Um, and I know the school district already presented during their work session, but this would be the opportunity for the school district to provide any further information or any other interested citizens can uh, testify on this matter. It, it looks like we've picked up the crowd. So would you like to come just give us a mini, uh, a compact uh, version of, uh, of what you uh, gave earlier? So our uh, capital facility plan expired. Um, the last plan was adopted in 2015 and our board of directors has adopted an updated capital facility plan and school impact fee request, which is based on construction costs and student generation rates. And the proposed uh, school impact fee before the council is a um, is is not the full um, calculated amount that the uh, district um, based on the state formula that we use and all school districts use. It is a reduced amount that the district is asking for, and um, I'm happy to take any questions that the council may have. For those behind you, that number is ten thousand seven hundred and sixty on a single family residence and 38.45 on a multifamily. Yes, and that's based on construction costs have increased about 68% since 2015. And um, so we, um, based on our formula, of, uh, the calculated amount was over $11,000 was our calculated amount. Thank you. And that Again. is to serve a, a growth in the district and to uh, support uh, for unhoused students, um, not in permanent facilities. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you again. Okay, Sam. Okay, um, I guess was there anyone else from the public interested on that one? I was just gonna ask at the end oh, on, the, on the whole. My apologies. Uh, no worries. I don't have anything else. The next item is the reference in our comprehensive plan that addresses that it references our parks plan. We're proposing to change our old 2015 plan to strike that and okay. replace it with the 2022 parks plan. And then we'll just need to open up a public hearing on that. Uh, you want to do these individually or, or on the whole? Whole public hearing at the end once you're done presenting. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do it on the whole. So moving on to the uh, rezoning and density increases. Give me one second and I'll pull up a presentation on this one, please. Okay, uh, earlier this year, the, uh, or excuse me, um, in 2021, the city adopted a housing action plan. And what this plan did was it addressed a number of issues and um, problems to be 
resolved uh, surrounding housing in our city. The number one issue that came up amongst citizens, at least in the survey, was affordability. <clears throat> and then uh, there were four overarching goals associated with housing in the city. The first was to encourage the production of homes that meet the community needs, increase the variety of housing types, expand the supply and access to affordable homes, and to support home ownership. And then there were something like 26 actual strategies that were proposed in the plan. And there were kind of a top five that came to the surface. I won't read those, but it was number four that I referenced in the staff report to strategically rezone areas for flexible housing options and to increase allowed housing types in existing zones. So that uh, this proposal before you this evening is to look at uh, five different sites throughout the city to consider uh, increasing the zoning, uh, really getting to that uh, concern of affordability. I know affordability is multifaceted. I don't pretend to understand all the ins and outs of it, but to increase density and to allow for more uh, housing types is one tool in the toolbox. So I'll go through these sites throughout town. The first one is off of Fairgrounds Avenue. And uh, this is uh, an area that is just east of the Fairgrounds Park Community Center. It's currently zoned R7. And we think this would be a good candidate for R20. Uh, kind of the primary reason for that is uh, there's some R20 zoning in the middle of it where the mobile home park is. And then to the west, even though the city park is at that location, if that was ever converted to some other use, the city plans suggest R20 zoning in there. Um, the property itself is pretty flat along... <clears throat> Uh, Fairgrounds Avenue would be um, ideal for kind of higher density. And then as you go up towards Tukes Mountain, we'd suggest just leaving that at R7. And then uh, this is kind of a view from the top, kind of getting up on Tukes Mountain, looking down toward the flat areas where we think that uh, some the R20 would go. Any questions on site number one? Do you have an address? Oh, sorry. Just, yeah, I just have a question on that. Uh, do we know when that grace realignment project might happen? So we're working on design right now. Um, we're working through a NEPA issue with the uh, feds because of the federal funding. So we're hoping that gets resolved next year, uh, which would mean right away would start next year. And then probably take a year. Um, so that would put us in end of 2024 or 2025. So I have concerns about this area because that's exactly the, the route that people would need to take to get in and out of there. Um, and until we get that intersection fixed at Maine and, and Grace, I just don't see it that that is a good idea to start packing a bunch of homes in there with a lot more traffic going in and out so that's just my thought on that one okie doke yes ma'am i was Did just you... wanting like an address or a id number for the lot for the oh area. yeah i don't have um well i do know the primary owner is andy de okay, if you. that was your question <laughs> yeah uh, uh, yes, it, it is. is and then yeah. I will add that at the planning commission meeting, um, there's like four homes on the northern end. We originally didn't have those in, but the planning commission recommended just pulling those properties into up to the railroad tracks. So we added those. But the parcels to the 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 larger parcels to the south are owned by Andy DeRochers, one property owner. So so the property to the Gosh, what is that? To the east of, of our property there, the fairgrounds and skateboard park. That's the wooded property as you cruise through there now? That's correct. 
Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, and there I'm are... trying to get it straight in my mind. And then, so the housing in between the two is the small little trailer park. That's, Correct. And then the other trailer park is on the other side by the fairgrounds. Yes. Okay, I'm getting it now. Thank you. The bus route bus route goes down it does not go to fairgrounds anymore correct no it goes south down it takes a ride on grace on grace it goes down and to the comes rasmussen and then comes back up to main street okie doke i think i think we got it okay the next site we're now over on northwest 20th avenue so um Think of kind of where Albertsons is, Main Street, and then go north on 20th Avenue. And then there's 9th Street at the top of your screen. Florence Robeson Park is there. Meadow View Apartments is kind of in the southern end of this red rectangle. So that's already built out. And then there's some townhomes in the middle part. And it's really the only, the northern part of this property, which could potentially benefit, which is vacant. We're recommending going from R10 to R20. Um, again, we've got R16 across the street. Uh, the existing housing types to the south are all multifamily or attached. And I think this could be a good target to... Uh, have some multifamily units. There, There is one uh, thing, I don't know if it's maybe getting into the details too much, but the underlying plat uh, shows this commercial on the corner. This was originally developed as a planned unit development. And there's a plat note that says that has to be commercial. So today, if someone came in, regardless of how the zoning has changed, they'd have to develop that as commercial. But what they could do is if they did want to build under the R10 or if it becomes R20, they could come back to uh, go through a, a replat process to eliminate that note. And that's a possibility. So uh, uh, is this the wetlands area across from the apartments? That's right. And I've got it, a couple it, pictures. Is that here. what we're looking at? I'm I'm trying to get it. Oh, no, no. Okay. Oh. Uh, sorry. It's not. Yeah. The, uh, it, it's it, just the it's a little jut of property on the corner there. Right. It's this property that's vacant along the corner. There you can kind of see the um like townhomes and the apartments to the well, south. This the, is looking south along 20th Avenue. That's a fourplex right there. Uh so it is what what zoning is fourplexes allowed in? Um, anything from, I think, R10 up, there might be a conditional use permit in the R7. So, are so are, yeah. are you, are you saying then this, this piece of property that we're looking at, the fourplex is to the south there. What currently it's R? R10 currently. Currently R10. So you could build fourplexes in R10. Mm -hmm. as as yeah. 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 Going um, for housing types are similar. It's really a density thing going from 10 units per acre to 20 units per acre. Okay. So you're okay. So we're what I guess what you're asking then on this piece of property, you want to double the density. Yes. Which could mean just a third floor. You could put in you could put in apartments and add a third floor and you would you would have your density. It could be. And you then I don't. I could look it up on GIS. I don't have the acreage of that northernmost par parcel, but that's really going to limit how yeah. many units you're going to be able to get there. Yeah. Okay. I I got that. Any questions on the, Yes, ma'am. I do have a question. So these are all city initiated? Yeah, these are city initiated. Um, I, along with our other senior planner, Emily, we kind of took a look at some areas we thought would be good candidates for increasing the density. So it's our effort to say, okay, if we if we want to actually do something with this housing action plan and not let it collect us, this is this is a small step, um, and we can come back with other other things in there in the future years. Down the street here on the west side, they they just 
put in uh, some sort of little subdivision. How many, what, what do you recall what that zoning, that would be on the corner of Onsdorf and 20th. Do you, do you mm -hmm. recall what, what zone that zoning that is? Um, it used to be neighborhood commercial and then I think it got changed to. Yes. I know we're doing like some are, So are, are those, do you know, are those townhomes? Are those, are those uh, single families? Are they a I, mix? From what I remember, it's going to be, um, they had to have to look up. I, I can't. I, my it's changed two or three times, so I don't but remember. Because this piece of property time. to me looks to be about the same size as that piece of property, uh, roughly. That, no, no, that, that one's bigger. You think that this one's bigger? Small. Yeah, 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 that's quite a bit bigger. You think, yeah, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, okay. Well, Miss Davis, while, while they're kind of looking at that, what question, question may you have? Well, as far as right. um, how it would look. All right, you have the, is that two level apartments right there? Then you have the fourplex. Now you're saying maybe change our 20. Are we going to be starting to look hodgepodge? Do we have an idea? You know what I mean? Like we want it to look cohesive oh, in a see. way that we don't look. You, um, so that's my question is how by rezoning it to R20, um, what's the possibility of what something like there could look? That's my concern question. Um, so under R20, we give a variety of housing types. Um, it's going to be limited to 35 feet in our residential district. So it can't be any higher than that. And that's typically going to be like not higher than three stories. Um, but this, uh, by changing the zoning, we're not approving a project, neither can we necessarily specify, but it would just increase the potential number of units. So it could look like an apartment complex. It could be townhomes. It even could be like a cottage development of detached units, but they would just have to hit a target, a minimum target of 10 units per acre and no more than 20 units per acre. And we still would ride with the with the uh, as as the council has, has told you that there is no on street parking, that this would all be off street parking. Yeah, uh, all the parking would need to be on site. On site, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One point five spaces per unit. <laughs> and that that piece of property that you're inquiring about to the north is zoned R twelve currently. So that's R twelve. Yes. And we're hoping here to go to R20. Yeah, this, it's a 0 0.27 acres. And, and that would you, and let me just restate it so I have it clear in my mind. It would be a minimum of 10 per with a max of 20. Correct. That's for this lot. That's for the, the one we're talking about, site number two. But it's only like a quarter of an acre. Oh, so yeah, that. Um, that's based on an acreage. So is that just a quarter acre? Yeah. So this, this would be three, a minimum of three and a maximum of six. Yep. Something like that. Yeah. So it looked just like it is. It, it would look pretty it much be, like the fourplex. The yeah, right. Those four the, plex. the fourplex next door. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So it's going to look right next to R10. Uh, and it basically with the land available, it's the same. What's the purpose of even bringing up rezoning at our point? I guess I'm, I'm concerned. I know there's no plan now, but my concern is what are we putting out there that somebody can come through? I want to make sure our bases are checked. So if it's R10 and the amount is about the same, what's what am I missing as far as why are we changing? Why do we want to maybe change this part? They could go up, they could move so higher, high, high. So instead of like that. Duplex, we could go higher. But you could do a four, um, you could do that fourplex right there, but be the yeah. same height and, and make eight units. Height height isn't height. height is the same R10 or R20. It's the number of units. Yeah. Instead of having a fourplex, you know, you're you're doing you know four comp four apartments in one entryway type thing. Right, thank you. Okay. I think I think we've got that, Sam. 
Okay, the next site, we're now over along Southeast Grace Avenue, just south of Old Town Battleground. There are a few parcels, some of which are vacant that have some opportunity for development. And so this is across the street from the village and the and the railroad tracks. Yes. North, north um, so south, yeah, there's there's a single family home development north of the village that's kind of um, to the east of the railroad tracks there. Okay. Um, and so to the north, you can see it's R20. We're essentially just saying, let's go ahead and pull that zone a little further south. Um, there's existing development where it says R10 on the map. That's like smaller detached units there along Rasmussen Boulevard. Um, it, so yeah, this is another one we'd suggest. If you'll go back to the one we were just looking, yes. Just just to the left of the R and R20, is that the Vancouver uh, Housing Authority property? I thought that was like second. Um, yes, that's it. Yeah, there's an apartment right here. Baby. Okay. So so all you're asking is to come down roughly two blocks and bring the R20 down, uh riding Grace. Yep, right along the along southeast. I think there's some like I, I don't know, townhomes, condos, whatever you want to call them in that area. Yeah. So okay. on this is I'm parked on site just off of Grace Avenue looking west there's some apartments there you see um the, this would abut and then this is a view to the south that gets it looks at some of those homes along um Rasmussen Boulevard gotcha any questions for Sam about number three on on Grace I just want to say I have the same concerns until until we get that road. I, I'm happy to do it once we get that road fixed. But right now, I think it's too too soon to get that going. So. Okie doke, Sam. Okay. Next site is off of State Route 503 and Onsdorf Boulevard. The word of Grace Church is at the corner there, and then their parking lot is um, on the northwest corner. Um, this proposal is recommended to go from R10 to R20 along the highway, and then as you go further east, it would go to R16, and then um, a little further east, it would go back to R10. So. Based on the infrastructure here, a major signalized intersection, um, we feel like this would be a good candidate to increase some zoning. And then just a few pictures. It's mostly large lot, like five acre lots with single family homes on them. There's a private street that runs through there to serve those parcels. Of course, if there's development, all the city infrastructure would need to be rebuilt in that area. And all the stuff to the to the west there, that R10 is what's being developed right now. Yeah, the stuff along to the that's Amira song and um yeah, the one where you did a development agreement on. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and the church is across the street from the commercial little com neighborhood commercial spot there. Is that so that I have it straight in my head? That's right. Okay. And that that would stay neighborhood commercial that corner. Yep, I would stay neighborhood commercial. And and again, it's currently R10, and the city's wish is to go to 20 on the state route side mm -hmm. and to 16 on the back of that. That's right. Okie doke. Any questions on site number four? I don't see any. Uh, later, sir. Okay, the final site in this package is taking a regionally commercial zone property and going to R16. This is the property north of what used to be the city property, now owned by Fire District 3. Uh, this site is 
inundated with wetlands. It's mostly wetlands. There's been little um, hope of building commercial on this property. Uh, I have talked to the, to the property owner on this one in the past um, who's in support of this change, but regardless, uh, this the city does think this would be a good candidate. Uh, the the uh, suggestion is, is to go to R16 on this one. The zoning to the north is R16, so just to bring that R16 further south. And then practically, I think what would happen is they would find some upland portion on site and use the uh, density from the wetland areas and have some kind of like smaller mini uh, neighborhood. Yeah, some smaller, um, probably multifamily project somewhere on site if if it's feasible. There's a lot of wetlands on that property. So so would would the city then allow them then to? I mean, we we know how wet that is. Uh, if they built on that upper corner by by the PL uh, and only used a very small portion of it to build, again, a, a mini neighborhood or a, a 10 unit apartment complex, would that fit R16? Yeah, I think it would. Um, Cause they could under the way, the way the city zoning works is they could, uh, you can use density or you calculate density based on gross acreage. Okay. Um, so they could take all the wetland areas and that would give them probably more units than they could actually fit on an upland portion of the site. They'd still probably need to impact wetlands if they're going to develop though. And, and, the, uh, and the previous city site, the just to the south of there, that is neighborhood commercial? Regional commercial. Yep. Okay. Just a quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, Sam, on something like this where they're the buildable lots is very small. Um, how well does it lend itself to the develop some sort of park, city on park on a location like this with park impact fees? Say, um, like it's a, always I don't possible. Know, like an off leash dog park or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's feasible, you know, we as the city would have to go through the same regulations that anyone else would. And then, of course, we'd need to acquire the property from the owner and kind and of it's see mostly wetlands. The value of that land is probably. Yeah, the little value in terms of the wetlands itself, in terms of, you know, like parks, the open space is nice. Just uh, I mean, there's some value beyond money of just having kind of that open space, which yeah, it can add to a, a park, even though you may not be able to go into it. My only concern would be if, if we haven't thought about that for some of these properties that we, we take that consideration before we rezone it, potentially uh, price ourselves out of the property. Where, where would you park? It, it, well, the same place you put the houses. <laughs> well, but then your park is where your park is. Right, walking <laughs> trails. I'm just asking if it's been looked at. I, okay, I, I I, no, no, I'm, I'm just trying. I understand. I would like to see a dog, uh, off leash dog park in the city. Uh, I, and my out for non developable Exactly, I understand that. Okay, cool. I'm really yes, ma'am, please. Uh, as a filmmaker, all this it came into my head earlier. We were approached and we um, agreed the department stored in Walmart uh, area to rezone it with our 20. The Tucker, we took back um, another rezone from regional to our 12. That's main we've got apartments. What I'd like to see is, I know we're talking about the pose, but I'd, I'd almost like to talk about what we have planning, what's in there. Don't forget what we've already said to do. And see if this check marks some of what we're looking at now, because we don't want to get so heavy that we're looking at every looks like everything is R20, R20. Um, I would like to see what recently we have as a council approved change versus how does that footprint onto what we're looking at now. So we're not all of a sudden now the pendulum is swinging so far that now we're heavy on one spot or the other. And that is right. Sir, when I'm looking at all of this. Okay, I understand that as well. And and since the uh, 
the way we're looking at the screen, I, I will ask, uh, Adrian, do you have any questions? I, I can't see you, so I, I don't know if your hand's up or not. Okay, you look like- I, you I do not, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. So on that last one that you had, Sam, mm -hmm. um, is, I mean, in your opinion, is the reason it hasn't been developed is because there's not enough buildable land there. And so to be able to go to a higher density zoning may develop part of it. Well, it's commercial now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if the property owner is in the audience tonight. He would be best able to speak to it. He um, he informed me and and even submitted a letter to the Planning Commission. He didn't realize his property got zoned commercial in the, in the last comprehensive plan updates. So that was a surprise for him. He feels like he's been kind of stuck with this. Um, you know, whether it's commercial or residential, wetlands are always an encumbrance. It, um, but I think there's just more potential to, in terms of kind of where the market is, market is, is to have a, re, a residential project in here than a commercial. Because the commercial is so far off of Main Street um, and typically commercial, they have very specific um, <laughs> parameters on what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. well and if and if the 20th side of that is wet then how good is commercial going through residential neighborhood to get to and so i think that you know as we look at these i mean you've shown us quite a few and, and we've got a lot of areas that are zoned r20 already and and i think there's a couple things that we need to remember is just because we rezone this doesn't mean we're going to have a flood of R20, you know, apartment complexes going up. Um, you know, it just changes the places that they can go up and mm -hmm. it gives them the ability to. Some of these are going to be more expensive to develop than others. I look at the piece um, where along uh, 503, where, you know, you have, I think those are five acre lots. So you've got, you know, 30, 35 acres with uh what two four six seven houses on them that's a lot easier to develop than a half acre piece that has wetland issues and so um <clears throat> i think as we look at this you know these will develop i see that developing quicker than i see uh stuff over by the community center uh this piece of property the stuff on south grace uh those things developing because it's the, the developers got to make money and it's going to it's an easier thing to develop than it is to to go through the hassle of of doing a little acre here and there and trying to trying to get build an apartment complex you can make money on so or townhomes or whatever it is but i think what it does it just gives options out there to have more and and i don't know that this would all be apartment complexes this could be condos this could be you know, that that missing middle that we're talking about, um, to, you know, first first time homes, mm -hmm. people that, that would allow it to be um, a little bit easier to to get into. Yeah. And to touch on Miss Davis's point, we specifically didn't we uh, in house, we came up with large sections of the city that we think probably need to go in a different direction of zoning but we need to save that for our citywide comprehensive plan update where we're really looking and that's going to be a two-year process i'm talking about periodic review with the county um because the goal isn't to kind of do look at this sort of ad hoc we wanted to look we saw these five sites as maybe some low-hanging fruit to do something now versus waiting two years later where we have kind of the bigger picture look and say okay exactly what is the ratio of multifamily we want in the city versus single family i can say right now we still need to we still could improve on getting more higher density and different housing types rather than single family even though um single family home the single family home is still the most desirable product for anyone that's that's what most people want. But I think what the housing action plan showed us was 
we first of all need to get people just into a home. You know, we first of all just need to do something to get people in homes and even get people in uh, a starter home that may be attached, like a town home or something like that. Well, the market will drive what's built. So, I mean, we see that as a council. We'll see um, when commercial's high, we see everyone want commercial. When residential's high, we see residential. If 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 rent's high and and there's a market for it, they'll build places to rent. But um, you know, I think this goes back to what we we talked about earlier this year and after the AWC conference of you know having having opportunities for us to have. Um, different forms of housing for people to get into because when when you're looking at you know housing that is I would consider first time home fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred square feet and it's six hundred fifty thousand um, dollars you know to to uh, to the credit from from the BIA coming to us and, and talking about you know raising the impact fees. You know how much of that is how how much of these values are we seeing being driven up by outside influences coming in? You know that have the money to drive, and six hundred fifty is nothing to from where they sold. And so I think that is worse than our impact fees probably are. And so you know how do we how do we find how do we bring it back down to be able to afford um, for those those people that are trying to to buy the first time and that's that's what these areas would do is but it we're not in the business of developing either so we just we set the we set the uh the the zoning and allow them to develop so thank you yes sir yes ma'am so Sam, I have a question for you. You had mentioned earlier that that property owner didn't know that their property was changed to commercial. Have you been in contact with all these property owners for this go around? I've sent every property involved a, a staff report, letting them know that their property could potentially be rezoned. I've talked to some, but I haven't spoken with all of them, but I've notified everyone. Okay. Is that the normal process for that? You just send a letter? Um, yeah, our code doesn't require that, but I did it because I didn't want to have that backlash. Fair, fair, fair. <clears throat> right. Thank you. Well, that that's the same thing the city did to the brother and sisters when Clark College was yes. coming. We zoned it educational complex or whatever the, the zoning was for that. And then, of course, uh, Clark College did us wrong, and uh, and then we had to go back and rezone rezone for that. So, uh, if if that gentleman or gentlewoman uh, should come see us, if if we were if we zoned him somewhere in the past and and needs to give him some hope, because I don't think there's any of the seven of us think that there's any commercial going in on that spot. And and we're not those people who would you know know that offhand, but you can just see it. So we'll we'll go with that. Any other questions of Sam on this? I don't see any. We'll continue on. The next item is the transportation system plan update, and I'll turn that over to Mark. <clears throat> Uh, again, we talked about it at the work session. So just in summary, we added the. Uh, local road safety plan grant that we got. So the project for that one, which is the compact roundabout at 20th and 9th. And then we added in the um, item for the TBD, just making it clear that the local roads and everything in the city is eligible for that funding. Thank you. And you want to just hit the water plan while we're... Yeah, water system plan we adopted last year. Um, went through Department of Health review. They had some pretty minor comments. The three biggest were um, updating the well health protection plan to add in all the new businesses, that sort of thing. Uh, just making sure our water rates are affordable, which they are. And then updating the water quality monitoring plan uh, to add checklists and those sorts of things. So we provide clear direction on how we'll handle any issues that happen in the water system. Thank you. 
And what else, Sam? Nothing else for the comp plan amendments. That's that's the ball game. Thank you, sir. We will then at this point open up the public hearing. Uh, we will ask that you uh, limit your comments to three minutes so that we can move along. And as you come forward, if you will state your name. And so at this point, we'll open that up. And uh, if there's anyone, please, sir, step right up. Yes, sir. On site number four, I believe it was. Could they bring that? Sam, can you? Can you go back? There were two maps. One second here. I'm having trouble getting this to work. <laughs> there we go. That map right is, there. Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Yes, sir. What may we do for you? Um, this property, the 13 properties in there were developed in the early 90s and CCNRs were created for those 13 properties, which limited, limits um, the property owners to one house per five acres. Um, about five years ago, the city of Battleground moved in and took eight of those properties of the 13 into the city of Battleground from the county. And then a month ago, that little bump out is my wife's and my property. And we were annexed into the city of Battleground about a month ago, officially. And my, uh, my question is, uh, does zoning, whatever the zoning is, does that supersede CCNRs? Or does it matter what the zoning is as long as CCNRs are in place? Because there's quite a bit of, opposition in the in that group of, of 13 homes to to battle the CCNRs. The CCNRs are actually in litigation right now. And I'm just curious if that zoning change would affect the CCNRs. Is Mr. Ellis with us? Or or do you know without yes. having to ask him? I can refer to Mr. Ellis, but to get started, CCNRs are on the private side. So um, no matter what the city zones that property at, the developer and the owners or the HOA that are involved with the CCNRs would would address those issues separately. But uh, Mr. Ellis can chime in on that as well. Okay. Yes, uh, Ms. Erdman is correct on that issue. Uh, the litigation that the gentleman is referring to, I have not heard of that. I'm, I don't know who's speaking. It's our attorney. It's our attorney. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> he's on, he's on. <laughs> yeah, there's um, <laughs> the developer who I think is represented here, I think initiated the litigation because of the CCNRs. It was their opinion that the CCNRs affected their ability to develop the property because they, they're interested in developing those acres, those acres that are shown there. And since my wife and I came into the city of Battleground a month ago, we would like to be added into that rezoning if we could be. I think we're now R7. Uh, and if we could be included with the properties to the south of us, that would be terrific. But uh, the CCNRs are currently in litigation. My wife and I are one of the plaintiffs. We're, we're suing to overturn the CCNRs. Um, but there's others in the audience probably on the other side also. Thank Ple you. Pleasure to see you, Mr. Hansen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, sir. Please. Uh, good, e good evening, uh, Steve Marash with uh, the Lander Home Law Firm on behalf of a, a number of the property owners that are subject to the site number four, the one you just heard about. Um, and, and I'm the attorney that filed the lawsuit uh, on the CCNRs, and I don't really want to talk much about a lawsuit because it's not for you. That's for the courts to decide. Yeah, the only thing I will not say, our interest. The only thing I will say is, regardless of whether the zone change is approved or not, the lawsuit is going to proceed, and development will occur if we're successful in the lawsuit. Um, so I don't think it's a relevant issue for your consideration. Um, I did want to talk briefly about Site Four um, because I do represent several of the property owners that are subject to Site Four. 
and they're all um, in favor of the zone change when we learned about it uh, from the city. Um, we, we agreed with it. We think it's a, a good idea. And I just, in three minutes, I can tell you why I think it's a good idea and meets your city's housing action plan, uh, particularly strategy four that Sam mentioned, uh, which is strategically rezone areas for flexible housing options. And I want to quote one sentence from the housing action plan under that strategy four, and that is strategic rezones in areas that have assets such as good schools, access to infrastructure, and open space can help the city meet the diverse needs of its community. So in looking at this, this property, there are, there are five schools within a half a mile. Um, Cam Academy High School, Daybreak Primary School, Daybreak Middle School, Chief Umtuck Middle School, and Captain Strong Primary School. And so the, the site has access to schools. Um, Battleground High School is also less than a mile away, just on the other side of 503. So it's got good access down 503 to the uh, to the high school. Um, access to infrastructure, that's the second factor under the, the Housing Action Plan Strategy 4. Um, just last year, the City Council approved a $1.8 million uh, intersection improvement for Onstorf and 503 intersection that will add um, eastbound right turn lane and a second westbound left turn lane. That was ordinance 2021-22, and it was added to the six-year uh, transportation improvement plan. So that's the one that's funded. So there will be an intersection improvement in the very near future. And the city has been uh, collecting proportionate shares from other developers. Well, one of my other clients paid proportionate share towards that, inter for inter excuse me, towards that intersection improvement. So the Property has access to infrastructure with 503 and an intersection improvement that is on the books. And if this property develops, I assume the city's going to charge all, all these property owners a proportionate share to help fund that, that improvement. Um, finally, access to open space. Um, there are two parks within a half a mile, uh, Marshall Community Park and Florence Park. Um, so the site has access to all three things that the housing uh, action plan says it needs to be considered for one of these strategy for rezones. There's also um, close proximity to churches. There's the Word of Grace Church immediately to the south, and they own uh, one of the lots, um, but the church, it's, which is a parking lot for the church, but just to the south is the church. And there's also four other churches, well, two other churches within a quarter of a mile and another church within a half a mile. Um, access to commercial areas. Uh, there's commercial zoning on both corners. And it's also a straight shot down 503 to the shopping centers. And Fred Meyer is about a half a mile away. Um, so it has access to all the things that your strategy for says it needs to be considered an up zone. And um, the fact that there's this intersection improvement going in right there, I mean, that would be maximized as far as the public's investment in the in, in, interest. Can't talk. In the public's investment in the intersection improvement would be maximized by increasing the density such close proximity. Uh, finally, the um, the beveling that the staff has proposed by doing R20 on the um, highway side by 503, then moving to R16, and then, then staying with R10 as you move further west provides a stepping down of densities as you move away from the highway, which we think that is also well thought out. So for um, for all those reasons, we support 100% of the staff proposal and we're available for any questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Come on up. My wife tells me I should not speak, but uh, I'm afraid I got to. Just to follow up with uh, name, the, name, me, name first, please, sir. Stephen Phelps. Thank you, sir. Three eight zero four. I'm one of the property owners in the uh, in in the, the discussion that just had here. Um, you have spent or in spending uh, uh, one added thing. There's churches, there's schools, and there's commercial. But you've got a strip that you're just about ready to pave that give us walking from from the corner of Onsdorf. And and on the uh, on the east side down to the main street. Okay, that is access that's walkable. Uh, many of the people in the audience are walkers. I'm a walker. It uh, it makes sense. It gets us to Safeway. It gets us to Fred Myers. It gets to a commercial area. 
e-bikes, big deal. People are starting to use the e-bikes. They're going to use that same access. So, so I just want to make sure you understand that um, I'm for the changes in the zoning. And uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Pleasure as always. Anyone else? There ain't going to be a second time. Anyone else? We'll close the public hearing and we'll move on. Uh, this will be voted on on the 5th of December. This comes back on the 5th of December, yeah. And we will draft the ordinance with everything that's been presented unless council would like to have further discussion and strike some of these out of there. So um, if there's things you're wanting to look at, just get a hold of us during the week. And we can, like I said, it will come back for adoption on the 5th, but we can always push it off if, there, if you would like more discussion. As long as we get it adopted before the end of the year. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we, we, we understand the 31st of December. Yeah. Can we add in the property? How hard would that be to add in the property that we annexed in to um, Mr. Hansen's property? Mr. Hansen. The, the council could do that. Uh, it is zoned R7 on three sides, so I wouldn't recommend it, but that's just my opinion. It, it'd probably be better to look at that more holistically. Pull, pull the but, map, pull the map back up, if you will. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the rest is county, though, right? The rest is county, right? <laughs> See, I, I mean, me personally, I would, it, I would like it to be the same as everything else that's in the city, that's that's there. Yeah, if if, if you're to do that, then uh, R sixteen would be the appropriate yeah. designation. Yep. Yeah. So, so you're splitting the R20 at uh, 120th Court. Yeah. Is that what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yeah R20, roughly. And then R16. Yeah. And then 16 on the on yeah. the west side. Right. So. Oh, okay. I see it. Yeah. I see it. Uh, I have no problem with that. That's one of the benefits of being in the city. Does anyone have a yes, ma'am? I'm okay with that as well, but can we talk about taking things to a, from Grace out? Uh, hold, hold on. Let's finish with Mr. Hansen first. Does anyone have any problems with uh, Mr. Hansen's property? I don't know the address, so it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, I don't see anyone that's going to complain against it, so uh, I don't see any problem with, with making Mr. Hansen's property R16 if this goes through. Okay, we will put that in the draft. Cool. Now, I'm sorry. Uh, so I would like to pull out the two properties, uh, one and three, for Let, uh, the grace. Let's go to one. Yeah. So that we... Oh, boy. <laughs> I, I'm sorry I'm about that. I'm 62. Let's refresh my memory. Uh, well, they're both on. They're both off of grace. One's, on, one's, one's on the one's north on side and one's on the yeah. south side. Fairgrounds one and... South Grace, and and again, your your part on that was until the intersection at Maine and Grace is correct, corrected. Yeah, then I can you, see the logic on that. You don't see the the need to bump that up. Right. <laughs> they would. They would be responsible for that failure. Is that correct, Mark? If, if they were to go in there and develop. Yeah, so right now we're collecting for the intersection specifically. So until we collect all of those funds, anyone that develops in the time frame pays that fee per trip. So all of those new developments going up Grace, uh, going north uh, on the right-hand side, they are all paying towards yeah, the, one the intersection. On, the one on the left side, the one on the right side, they've all been paying towards the project. Okay. But there's no proposed project for this right now. Yeah, that's a good point. There's no proposed project on this. It potentially could be developed next year or five years, years from now or 10 years from now. This is just strictly um, a zone change, kind of thinking more about holistically densities throughout the city. And, and I would agree with Councilor Walters on that then. I mean, if there's no, there, none of this is going to be adding money into the Grace intersection and just based on my short time frame. And I'm still seeing a church that's standing on on Main Street building. Um, 
uh, I'm just hesitant to add more volume to the grace intersection until um, all the powers that be send their checks. The landmark. Yeah. Oh, okay. Landmark okay. Church. Okay. I'm yeah. I'm trying to think which how long that took. Well, yeah. You know, and just the machinations that were involved in that. And I, I think I I am supportive of the idea. I'm supportive of the of the intent. And I don't see that waiting a year is gonna gonna hurt that. So what you're stating is we're not in a big hurry. I'm not. I mean. Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. So I was thinking how. I don't know what the word is. Not that it's not fair, but that all these other neighborhoods impacted that same intersection and they didn't have to wait. Yeah, so we've already impacted this a ton. But again, I don't have an opinion on this property in particular, but uh, I don't know. So, yes, sir. I think the, the main thing for this and, and anything that we're looking at is when, when you're looking at zoning is um and, and i'll give you an example of this is is years ago when we were looking at um the marijuana store coming to town and we had an opportunity to determine where that went through zoning and we didn't do it we didn't take the opportunity to do that and when they dropped the permit it was too late and so then they were able to go into where they're at where we could have zoned where it was only in commercial or uh, industrial areas, things like that that the other cities were doing. So my my view on this is 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 you know to take the same point that you guys are saying, no one's developing this right now. But what it does do is it puts it into an R twenty zone that allows it to be developed at R twenty in the future and not R seven and holds it at that R twenty. And they could come in and and the next council could change that, but. But um, I don't think they're going to develop it before we get funding for the road, personally. But I don't think most of this stuff is going to be developed before funding for the road. Um, we, we have, you know, the, the, the neighbors that just spoke to us, they're, they're in litigation. So it doesn't matter what we do. The litigation could take a year and a half, two years before, before they get through litigation. Um, you know, I would, I would assume they hope not. But um, so for me, it, it's, it's literally just changing it to hold it um, and, and kind of look at what we want. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be built right away, um, especially if it wasn't driven by a developer wanting to change it because they're wanting to put something in there. Um, so that's, I, I don't have a problem supporting it, even, even with the intersection there. Um, that's either one of these. Let's move on to number three, and then we'll take them at the same time. I don't know if there's a different argument for number three. It's so, the same so no, 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 number three is is the same argument. Yeah. What's the hurry? Right. <laughs> uh, boiling it down. But you have different. You have different exit points out of three. You can go down Rasmussen. You can go down South Grace. You don't have to go. We don't know what those trips are that are going north to, to the intersection. Um, and do we look at that? I mean, when we look at, if we looked at number three from, from the transportation plan, what percentage would you say is going north to, to Grace or going out Rasmussen, especially once Rasmussen connects or? Yeah, I think in that area, you're probably 50, 60 will go up and then 40, 50 will go south or west. Yeah, it's, it's fairly even split, give or take. Uh, which is different than the other one the other one is going to be a lot more yeah the majority would go on the yeah. northern one a majority would likely go through the intersection i i do agree with you on number one on number three i see the difference in that you could turn right and head down grace and and hit eaton and and come that way so there, there, uh, Rasmussen and then further down would be Eaton. Uh, so I, on number one, I do agree with you. And let's talk about number one right quickly. Does, uh, is there any, uh, Ms. Walters has put forth that, that number one be struck. Is there any disagreement to that? I do. I, I would like it to be in there, but that's fine. I don't understand. <laughs> Well, I, I think I, I think four of us 
I, I think the other four of us, and I can't see Adrian, and I'll ask him though. Adrian, do you have any any on this? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I agree with Councilmember Bowman. I mean, I think we need to look at these, and I, I know we're looking at them with the best intentions and to how will traffic flows uh, occur once the rezone is done. But again, uh, as Councilmember Bowman said, uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the future as far as how long it's going to take to redevelop those properties and the consequences of not zoning it properly now and waiting and then having something go in that we wish did, wasn't there. But had we acted sooner, um, I, I, think, I think we need to look at this from a policy standpoint and you rezone and when projects get proposed to be put under the new zoning, that's for staff to figure out in terms of the traffic impacts and the traffic patterns. They're not going to let something go in there that's going to overwhelm the local, uh, local, you know, uh, roads, road infrastructure. And so uh, I, 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 I agree with us just moving forward ahead and keeping, keeping the recommendations of staff. Thank you. Uh, just kind of looking left and right, I, it looks like it's roughly four to two. So uh, Sam, I believe the consensus is that number one be struck. Okay. Moving on to number three. Uh, number three in my vision is different and is, is worthy of remaining. I will look left and right and we'll see how that rolls. You're fine with that. I'm okay. You I'm okay you can get that. you can yeah. kind of see it. Yeah. Mr. Cortez, sir, you. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I I'm 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 fine with it too as well. Thank you, sir. And so number three stays. So we're two, three, and four stay. Okay, dope. Moving on. Uh, operating and capital improvement. And five. And five. And five. I'm sorry. I thought there. Yeah. I, 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 I did miss something. No, I was going through. I'm like, I did. You didn't miss anything. I did. So two, two through five. Got it. Uh, we're moving on to uh, ordinance number 22-11, fiscal year 23, operating and capital improvement budget. Ms. Erdman and Ms. Lowry. Thank you. Yes. So in front of you is going to be, well, you've seen it already. We've gone through it, but I will turn it over to Ms. Lowry to go through the operating budget. Good evening, Council. Before you is the 2023 budget. And Council has an opportunity to accept public comment on the budget. So staff recommends opening up the public hearing. Thank you. Uh, I will open up the public hearing. Is there anyone that wishes to comment on the uh, on the budget? Going out the door? Okay, just just make it, just going to see if you're coming this way. <laughs> so at this point, seeing no one, we'll go ahead and close the the uh, public hearing. Uh, discussion amongst amongst us. Any discussion? Nope. Okie doke. Okay, so we'll have our second public hearing for the budget at our next meeting, and then. Following, we will ask for adoption. Otherwise, we would have to have another meeting in order to get a budget adopted before the end of the year. On the 5th of December. Correct. Moving on to ordinance number 2022-09, uh, the 2023 property tax levy. Before we, uh, well, we'll move on to you two. And then before we move on to the public hearing, I, I do have a statement. Well, this one's not actually a public hearing. Oh, We've that's right. This that is a discussion. So this that's is correct. for adoption. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Lowry. So before you is our property tax levy for 2023. It does have in there taking the 1%. And with that, I will answer any questions that council has. I had earlier this morning uh, asked uh, Mr. Rochers and the finance committee uh, to kind of speak to this uh, since they spent hours looking at it and to see how they feel towards this. The, as we talked about last meeting, the, the 1% is $46,000. Uh, 
36. $36,000 would drop the rate to 107? Correct. And without this would drop the rate to 106? Correct. Okay, just so I, just so I stated what I thought I heard two weeks ago. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, I don't have much. I, I told you you wouldn't get a sophisticated response from me. Well, I understand, but um, I I support it. If we don't take it now, then we just end up in the future. We end up like the county where you have to go out and ask the the community for money. Um, when you don't take it and you ask people for money, they definitely reference it. And you know, why didn't you do what you could have when you had the opportunity to? And uh, I feel like it, it doesn't change the rate from last year. It, it decreases it slightly, correct? correct? So I don't feel like we're increasing the tax burden. So. I don't. Can I add something to that? Please, the, uh, we were going to move to the other two of you as we go. Yeah, so um, the, other, the other thing that um, wasn't mentioned was that um, this is um, a way to get the new people moving in oh, to yeah. pay the same same rate that the that the rest of us are already paying now so okay yeah cool make it equitable Ms. davis any anything from you well i see i'm probably very unpopular but the, when you say it's a decrease it's because we had we, last year we did the full amount so to say it's a decrease on my part it's not i feel that with the situation that we're in and inflation and the gas tax going up and the other taxes, I I can't vote in favor of increasing this. I would like to uh, I would say no, I'm not in favor of it. Okay, nope. Just want to let everybody know. And we'll open up to everyone else well, at this point. Can we clarify what it was last year? So when we say the decrease, it's for the levy rate itself. So the levy rate went from a dollar twenty-two to either a dollar six or a dollar seven. When you're looking at the difference between the two columns that are in your report of what someone would pay based upon their assessed value with the dollar six versus the dollar seven, it's about a five dollar difference. And that is highly dependent upon what their increase personally was for their property with their AV. If it's above the 15, 20%, they will see an increase regardless of taking 0% or 1%. It's just a $5 difference between the two across the board, regardless of increase in AV, if that so, makes sense. I was thinking, was it just the 1% that we took last year? Last year, I believe we took we, the banked capacity took the as bank. well. Mm -hmm. What was the total? It was like a dollar or not a dollar. Like $1. It was 1.64 and it, um, the dollar amount, it had decreased. So when you bank capacity, you bank it, but each year it gets less. Yeah. So what was worth about 30, about 35,000 when we banked it became 17,000 when we took it. If that makes sense as well. It does. I any other? Yes, sir. So I don't know how we don't take it when we have 8% inflation. When you have the inflation that we have, we're still going in the hole 7%. But if, if I told you, you got a choice of going in the hole 10% or 9%, which one would you rather have? I think most people would say 9%. And so, um, you know, this, it's crazy to me because this is this is something that was a you know passed through the state voted on by the people but if you look at our if you look at our levy rate from when when I first got on council to where we are now and I remember Mr. Ganley gosh he used to bring in his the guy kept everything and he would bring in his he would bring in his tax statement from 92 when, like 92 and it was crazy what they were paying in 92 compared to what we're paying now and i mean i just don't know it, it's it's not a lot and and that's that's well it's not a lot right but like i explained to my wife you know it's it's not the thousand dollar shopping trip that kills me it's the hundred hundred dollar shopping trips that kill me right and and so it adds up over time 
And we saw that when we took the bank capacity, when we, when we don't take that 1% and you almost, you, you drop that by almost half the next year, then, then, um, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't allow us to, to, this isn't getting us ahead. It's just barely keeping us afloat is what it's doing. And I know this isn't everything. We've got a lot of different taxes that come in and we've got sales revenue up, but the one thing that there's, well, there's three of us on council that, that you know, we're kind of on the tail end of the recession that we had. It was because the city, it was because of the, the foresight of city council members to sit up here and, and take not only the 1%, but to also have rainy day funds and to have a 21% cushion and to, that got us through the last recession that we were in. And we've lowered all of that stuff. We've, 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 we've lowered our um, utility taxes. We've lowered, um, we, we have less millage rate now than, than, than then. And this is going to continue to go down if we have inflation continue to do what it does um we lost 15 cents this year that's that's quite a bit um and you do this for two three years and we'll be going to the voters asking for a lid lift and like mr ganley used to say about ctran it's easier to take five cents at a time than it is to go ask for 50. and that's that's what that's what we're saying here is is um you know thirty five thousand dollars is a half of a police car it's uh you know a part-time employee working during the summertime for beautification so um I know it's not a lot in the grand scheme of a budget but I think it's 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 responsible of us to take it when we have the inflation that we have I just want to point out the Bill Ganley example that you stated in 1993 for his home it was 574 dollars for yeah. 2022, that same home paid $474. And then 2023, taking the 1% would be $481. And that's with the increase to AV to that same property. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I guess it's kind of what Shane was saying okay. is if we don't take the 1% now, then we can just add it to next year, right? And then we end up having a larger percentage, not necessarily more money. Because it decreases, it'd be, but it'd be less money, but but more at once. So it, I think that this way it is better than doing the fifty cents at a time or whatever. So, anyways, hopefully that made sense because I don't think it did. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> Anyone else, Mr. Cortez, sir? Do you wish to opine? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't want to give this any more attention than it deserves because like uh, Council Member Bowman stated, it's just one of several revenue streams that come in, into the city. But uh, frankly speaking, uh, supporting this uh, means supporting fiscally responsible policies. Supporting this means supporting lower property taxes, um, not supporting it means supporting higher property taxes and wanting to play uh, quick little gimmicks with politics. Um, so I, I fully support this. Thank you, sir. Then uh, is there a motion? Move to adopt ordinance 22-202209 as presented. Second. Thank you. Uh, I believe we're supposed to read it by title. Uh, I job. always seem to miss that, and <laughs> it just came to me. Mr. McCoy would have reminded me, though. I knew you were going to remember. <laughs> An ordinance levying the annual property tax to provide revenue for the city of Battleground, Washington, for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2023. Thank you. And Ms. Cody, if you'll just call by name, please. Councilmember Davis? No. Councilmember Cortez? Yes. Count, oh, sorry, Deputy Mayor DeRogers? Yes. Mayor Johnson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Bowman? Yes. Councilmember McCoy? Yes. Councilmember Walters? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on. 
Resolution number 2022-15, the multifamily tax exemption program and residential target areas, public hearing setting. Yes, so um, for this one, we've looked at this a couple of times. We've already gone through the ordinance for the code language. We've looked and discussed options for residential target areas. We originally started with the Deacon Development property that we entered into a development agreement with them back in July. And we also discussed adding the downtown area. Um, at the last meeting, we decided to take out the downtown and take out the eight year market rate. So as we were coming back through and had legal reviewing this for adoption, uh, we realized that we should have set, we should have adopted a resolution to set the public hearing for that specific residential target area. So this is that formal action. So what we're doing tonight is asking council to adopt this resolution that will set the, public hearing and our noticing requirements for a January 3rd public hearing for the residential target area. And then after that, we can adopt both the target areas and the ordinance associated with that. So I will turn it over to any, council. Any questions of Ms. Erdman? So this is just for it to come back for a public hearing? Yes. It's not, we're not approving. It's formality, it's formality on the RCW is they have specific noticing requirements and they they okay. state that you may adopt a resolution, but then everything else underneath of that kind of requires that resolution. So we're we're coming back to do the formality. Okay. Yeah. Is there a motion? Move to adopt resolution 2022-15 as presented. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none. Again, Ms. Cody, if you'll call by name. Councilmember Davis? Yes. Councilmember Cortez? Yes. Deputy Mayor DeRosiers? Yes. Mayor Johnson? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Bowman? Yes. Councilmember McCoy? Yes. Councilmember Walters? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And so that will show on the uh, agenda for the 3rd of January. That's correct. Yes. Is that a Monday or a Tuesday? That one is a Monday, the second meeting of January. It's Tuesday. Monday. Okay. Uh, moving on to resolution number 2022-14, the governance manual update. Yes, thank you, Mary Johnson. This is uh, the final step in adopting the new governance manual. The governance manual committee has been working on this for the majority of the year. We did kind of put this on hold so we could get through some of the annual code amendments, but those will be following closely behind. Uh, the biggest change on that was changes to the Parks Advisory Board and changes to the ethics uh, process. So those have been reviewed and will be adopted with the annual code. So if council is good with the draft manual, we'll look for a motion to adopt. Any uh, questions of Ms. Erdman? Motion, so, please, thank motion you. Motion to, to adopt resolution 2022-14, hold on. It's 14, okay. Thank you. Governance manual update. Thank you. Yeah. And there's a second with uh, Mr. Rogers. Uh, any discussion on that? And we'll just call for a vo 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 voice. God, I can't say that. Uh, a voice vo vote. You all have a turkey early. Wow. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> any opposed? Hearing none. God. Administrative reports, Ms. Erdman. Yes, we have one administrative report from Mr. Crummett this evening. It's associated with Mill Creek property agreement that is also tied to a zone change with the comp plan amendment. So I will turn it over to Mr. Crummett. Okay, you might remember during our January 5th meeting when we heard the developer initiated zone changes that there's one property referred to as the Mill Creek property. Uh, the At the time, the recommended change was to go from commercial to R7. And as the discussion kind of unfolded, it was council's agreement that it really should just go to R12 and actually get some more density in there uh, to bring middle housing. That was the popular phrase of the evening, uh, bring middle housing into the city. Uh, and a development agreement was recommended because the council didn't necessarily just want an apartment complex in there, but maybe some product that would encourage home ownership. So uh, I think townhomes was really the product that um, seemed feasible uh, for the applicant. I've worked with 
the applicant's attorney, as well as our contract city attorney, and we put together uh, what's called a concomitant agreement. Um, and that's actually kind of simpler than a DA, since we don't really actually have a project at this point, but attached is the concomitant agreement. Um, and it's ready to kind of be signed at our next meeting, December 5th. So if there's any questions, I'll this, hear those now. Th this is Joe, the body shops property. Uh, this is Krybliski. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Joe's property, Joe, right? Joe, the body shop guy. Yep. Okay. That's it. Just make sure we're talking yes. about same, same. 92nd. 92nd Avenue. Yep. I would ask you what can whatever it is but i'm i'm gonna pass uh so are you looking anything for us from us yeah it'll come back as a ordinance or res you know we'll it'll come back i think as an ordinance on december 5th so no decisions need to be made tonight i just wanted to inform you that's in place and when we adopt all of the comprehensive plan amendments from those in july to those heard tonight will include this concomitant agreement with it. The delay is just the pronunciation. <laughs> so so I'm that, say it again. It. Yeah. What was that again? <laughs> yeah. This, you want to hear it for the third time. Yes. <laughs> concomitant. Bear's gonna be saying that here quite a bit. Yeah, I'm that's my new word. I, I hopefully I it shows up on Jeopardy or something. I, I can that's impress right. my wife if it does. Yeah. Uh so all of the discussion we had on in June and in July is what's in this agreement, pretty much, uh, in a in a short shorter form. The agreement is limited to really only one thing. I'll keep it simple: um, that when this property develops under R twelve, they need to be townhomes. Okay, and that's it. And a very that's simple statement. That's it. It's that simple. If uh, if they want to change that, then they need to come back to you as a council to somehow get out of that agreement. See us again. Yep. Cool. Anything else, Ms. Erdman? That concludes administrative reports. Thank you and very much. I, actually, one thing. I was incorrect. January 3rd is a Tuesday. Both meetings okay, in January are on I, Tuesday. That's, that's yes. what I was thinking. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> My rain man moment. There. <laughs> 2025, January 3rd. That's right. Kmart sucks. <laughs> Gotta watch Lawfare. <laughs> okay, moving on to council communications. Are there any? There is one for me. Oh, there's one for you. Just so we have the tree lighting before the next council meeting, right? Oh, yeah. December, December 2nd. 2nd. December 2nd, yes. Friday, December 2nd. Yes. Starts at believe. Six. It starts five thirty ish, five forty five being the blessing. And will the, there the be picture, Will there will there be pictures with uh, Mr. Claus and Mrs. Claus? Mr. It and will Mrs. Be. Claus will be present. Yes. What's the time on that? Five thirty. Yes. Five fifteen for you. I know Kim is working out the final <laughs> schedule with the, who will be doing the the blessings and so forth. So. Okay. That's after our next meeting. Uh, here, let me just state this old man screaming at clouds. These guys and this walking trail are pissing me off. Sunny days, 13 of them, according, 14 of them, according to the weatherman. These dudes ain't showing. How much have we paid them, Megan? Talking about the, like about half a the walking trail. Yeah, it, they, they build us a million dollars. We, yeah, we we paid them five hundred thousand dollars for since the first of April. They were supposed to be done Halloween. I'm not walking on it. I'm a walker, just like Mr. Phelps. They are pissing me off. I'm going to ask the council that we make a resolution that we not pay them one more dime until it's completed and signed off by you, because I don't. You've told us over the years no paving. According to the state, after the 1st of November, I believe, is the date. And because pavement doesn't do well, and I understand that's for cars. Yeah. It's not for feet. But I'm not buying a pig and a poke from these, these guys. If they can't show up for work, I'm certainly not interested in paying them. Makes us look bad. We can't, according to my neighbors, we are incapable of building a walking path. 
We're not incapable. Name the company for me. Uh, they're Northwest Construction. Northwest Construction is incapable. I'm almost to the point of asking that they come on the 5th of December and express to us what their problem is. <laughs> I, we gave them six months, supply issues. I didn't see anything on a walking path that comes on a boat from China. Ain't a thing there that I can see comes from China. Matter of fact, I would ask, Ms. Erdman, will you ask, again, name the company, Northwest? Construction. Northwest Construction, that one of their representatives show here on December 5th to explain to us how difficult it is to put in half mile of walking path. Have we heard anything on that, Mark? Yeah, so they, um, they've obviously been working on it. They're finishing up the piping. They've got the ditch inlets left um and then that storm system will be done um and i think that's it and then they'll be ready to pave but i agree i mean they've had quite a few days now of dry weather and they haven't been out i think in the last three uh no 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 sir in the last 13 14 days i have driven by there because i am mostly retired and got nothing else better to do <laughs> and uh these cats ain't showing up they haven't shown up last for, week they've well, I, when you have two people yeah, I, on a half yeah. mile, that ain't showing up. Uh, if that God almighty, we <laughs> in uh, from December of 44 till May of 45, we beat the Germans, for God's sakes, running across the continent of Europe. These cats can't build a walking path. Please have them come. If they refuse to come at that point, then at that point, I will make that we hold every dime, that we pay them nothing more until Mark, once it's completed, walks every inch of it and pretty much takes a magnifying glass and looks at this thing to, uh, to our satisfaction. They are very irritating. I will also state I'm irritated again, Matt, uh, old man screaming clouds, about the uh, community center and the bush and the landscaping. Have we talked with those guys? We have. When are they coming? They haven't told me, but it should be hopefully any What is their name? They are Western United. I look forward to seeing them on the 5th of December. Those bushes <laughs> have been dead since roughly July. Uh, I've talked with you once or twice about it. I've talked with Miss Urban once or twice about it. I understand that we get a warranty on this stuff. They need to perform. Please have them come. Let's ask them, do you plan on perform? Did they cash our check, Ms. Uh, Lowry? Of course they cashed our check. If we had it, if I had it done at my house and they had screwed me like that, they would have no rest. It is the people's money. We are the people's representatives. It is time for them to act. If they can do it in the next two weeks, they don't need to come on the 5th of December. But if they're not here on the 5th of December, I'm asking that we call in their bond and we take their money and we can do it. Is that how it works, Ms. Lowry? With a performance bond? I'll let Mark speak to it better because he's actually... Yeah, so we've got... Well, there's two projects here. So on the community center, we've got the maintenance bond. So yeah, if we wanted to pursue it, we would call it in. We essentially would go to the bonding company and say, hey, we've got this issue. We've talked to the contractor. They won't do it. So you need to pony up. If, if uh, they're not here on the 5th of December, on the 6th of December, Ms. Erdman, I will ask the council on the 5th to authorize you to call the maintenance bond and we call it in. If they're not willing to come see us and fix this, does it have a timeline on it? We'll have to look and see if it has Let's a look at the timeline. But we toured it on the 1st of May, 5th of May, actually. It looked good. It doesn't look good now. And we paid $75,000, $70,000. So as the folks' representatives, it's time to get our money's worth. And so... Uh, I look forward to seeing both of these companies. We'll give them plenty of time 
to express to us how poorly their work ethic is in finishing a half mile walking path in six months. God. Yes, ma'am. On a more positive note. No, no, it's, that's just very kidding. positive. Yes. So I just wanted to, since we're speaking so openly, no, please. Um, during that big rainstorm when the tree fell and everything, there was a giant pothole that I, I did hit, but luckily it didn't do anything. Anyways, I went to go check on it later on and I saw a pothole about this big. I called into PD, uh, non emergency to get somebody out there to put some cones out there as I waved everybody to not hit the pothole. Anyways, an officer responded and put some cones out. And then within that same day, somebody from Public Works came in and filled it with um, asphalt. Like literally, same day, it was repaired. And so I thought that was so handy that I reported some other potholes and they fixed those too. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that I, I really at least don't have a trail done. So yeah. <laughs> Shall we refer to you as you the pothole princess? Yeah. But anyways, I and just you wanted build to say... a walking path. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean... to bay in a gravel section. Anyways, I just want to say that I was appreciative of how quickly they worked. I was, I was very impressed. Thank you. Thank you. And so uh, I'll finish with this from the angry old man screaming at clouds. I wish all of you the best of Thanksgivings. The city will be closed on Friday. Thursday and Friday. Thursday and, of course, Thursday and Friday. Our next meeting will be December 5th. Is there a, there will not be a study session? We don't think we have one. We are, we are meeting uh, to discuss the, uh, yes, uh, yeah. an employee. Exactly. An, yes, an executive session. Yeah. So uh, until then, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we'll see you on the 5th of December.